good writing is often just a matter of mechanical know-how and common sense. Putting an idea down on paper is like a construction project. You build letters into words, words into sentences, sentences into paragraphs, paragraphs into reports or papers, maybe letters. My major construction project happens to be writing this English textbook. But any writing depends on the sum of its parts and how they fit together, like this shelf I just finished. It was all boards and joints, nuts and bolts, until I put it all together to make it work. I'm a writer, not a carpenter. A writer has to understand the, the structure of the language. Words are my boards. And language is my skill at fitting them together. When they go together tightly and tell you what I mean to say, they hold up my thoughts for everyone to understand. That's the power of writing, making sure that everyone else can understand exactly what you mean. Because nearly every job requires some kind of clear, correct writing. How well you can do it often determines whether or not people will respect your ideas and abilities. After all, writing is like, well, like any other construction. If one element is weak, a whole business can fall apart on you. Believe it, I have first-hand experience when it comes to matters of poor... <clears throat> matters of poor construction. Oh, poor Arthur. Haven't you been working on those shelves for over a month? Uh, perhaps you could hang them up from the ceiling and call it art. Perhaps you could not. To let a person know you're here. Besides, it's just this top shelf that it doesn't want to stay up. Hmm. It probably doesn't want to be there at all. Hmm. But do you know what happened to me at work today? What? I was trying to spell... Oh, I forget. But it was impossible. I am P-O... Oh, Arthur. Back home, the language makes sense. But today, when I handed in my report, mm -hmm. Mrs. Johnson called me a, a terrible speller. Sonia, spelling gives a lot of people trouble. At times, Mrs. Johnson really seems to think I'm, I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. But at other times, she, she tells me I can't spell. And <sighs> Your refrigerator is one place in America where a person could starve. Sonia, what do spelling and food have to do with each other? Food. F-O-O-D. Food. Sonia. S-T-O. Stew. Sonia. Shoes. J-O-O-S. Honestly. Well, they sound the same. Why aren't they spelled the same? In English, the same sound is often made by different spellings. And if they give you trouble, you have to learn them. In stew, the oo sound is made by E-W. In juice, it's U-I. In soup, it's O-U. Well, excuse me. I'm only human. You can be human and spell, too. It'll help matters with your supervisor and your job. I'll help you. I can try out the book while you try out some spelling. Oh, S-P-E-L-L. -L. I think you have an impossible language. And worse. Nothing to eat. Mm. Uh, I, I'll stop by later, after supper. Maybe then I can remember the words that give me trouble. Good. Just don't bring the whole dictionary. Ha, ha, ha. Ah, maybe I'll bring you some glue, yes? For yourself? That G-L-O-O -O glue? No, that G-L-U-E glue. Sonia is learning this language, but she's still having a few spelling problems. 
Unfortunately, there are words in English which give many people problems. They don't sound the way they're spelled. You know, they just take a little getting used to. When you're trying to learn a particular word, notice the trouble spots. Any odd or unlikely combinations of letters. Close your eyes and try to see the word in your mind. Pronounce it distinctly. Then try to write it from memory. If you're still uncomfortable with the word, write it again. They call this the see, say, write method. Uh, for instance, onion. Right? Onion. O N I O N. Onion. Now, there's some standards you can count on. Rules that make it easier to spell most words. I'm trying to explain them in this book I'm writing, in the chapter on spelling. For instance, how to form plurals. Oh, um, book. Books. It's pretty straightforward for most nouns. To indicate more than one person, place, or thing, just add S. You see, desk, desks. Word, words. Parrot, parrots. Uh, however, we do have to watch for some exceptions. A word that already ends in S, like kiss, doesn't look or read right with another S next to it, and it's wrong. Add an ES, and you get kisses. There are a number of words that take ES in the plural. Besides words ending in S, there are those ending in SH, CH, X, and Z. And you shouldn't find those spellings too difficult because the E is pronounced. Listen. Brush, brushes, ranch, ranches, tax, taxes. It would be pretty difficult to say those words without the E. They just wouldn't sound right. Of course, there are a few words where the sound doesn't change, and you just have to learn those. But take advantage of the words that can be spelled according to their sound. The see, say, write method will pay off for you. Help yourself by pronouncing every syllable of the word distinctly. Pronounce a word to yourself the way it should be spelled, even if it sounds a little strange. For instance, you can emphasize to yourself the difference between words such as leaves and cheeps. Some words ending in F or F-E or the F sound simply take S in the plural. Roof, roofs, chief. Cheeps, laugh, laughs. But with some of these words, you have to change the F to V and add ES. Life, lives, leaf, leaves. Knife, knives. You can usually tell which is which by the way a word is pronounced. There's a list of such words in your workbook. Remember to pronounce those spelled with F differently from those spelled with V. Unfortunately, there are some words which are not spelled the way they sound when you change them to the plural. But there is help. Some simple rules will guide you. I've been collecting them for my book. Take words ending in O, for example. When the O follows a vowel, or vowel sound, as in embryo, you add only an S to form the plural. Look at radio and rodeo. The O comes after a vowel. We only add S. But when the O follows a consonant, as in potato, tomato, hero, you often add ES. 
potatoes, tomatoes, heroes. But for some words that end in an O following a consonant, you only add S, such as Eskimos, pianos, altos. You'd better look at the list in your workbook, visualize the words in your mind, and write them down. You'll be surprised at how many you remember. I have a surprise for you. Uh -huh. Here are my problem words. Quite a list. Yes, but it's getting shorter all the time. Hmm. Today, Mrs. Johnson explained how to make florals out of words that end in Y. And? And she said that sometimes you just add S, but sometimes you change the Y to I and add ES. Mm -hmm. The problem is I can't remember when to do which. Let's see. I was writing a returned item report. I thought you said they returned several of these toys, Sonia. I know, but these words that end in Y get me confused. Sonia, sometimes things aren't as hard as they seem. Let me show you. Just remember that when the Y comes after a consonant, like in the word company, change the Y to I and add ES. Oh, that rule will work for lady. I can change the Y to I and add ES because it follows the D and that's a consonant. Ah. But that won't work for the toys. You have a vowel there. That's easier. Just add an S? Right. Oh, T-O-Y-S. <laughs> I like vowels. They're easier. With a vowel, just add the S. Sonia, you're getting better at this. Mrs. Johnson was right. When the Y comes after a consonant, change the Y to I and add E-S. And if the Y comes after a vowel, all you have to do is add the S. I must put that in the book. Try these examples. Hmm. I should change the Y to I and add ES because the Y follows a consonant. Countries, authorities, both I, E, S. The Y to I bit is fine. I, I know what to count on. But give me some rules for these. Ox. Oxen, mouse, mice, goose, geese. Who thought up these crazy spellings? Louses. They call them lice. Hmm? <gasps> Ooh. Sonia doesn't understand that the English language has been changing and evolving for more than five centuries. Nobody planned it. It just happened. So we've got to make the best of it. Why don't you take a good, long look at a list of irregular plurals? Using the see, say, write method we've discussed, you'll get them down. Oh, you may also want to notice those words that had the same spelling in the singular and the plural. One deer, ten deer. One sheep, one hundred sheep. <laughs> Sonia, let's see how you're doing. Check the words on this inventory, please. Words that end in S, SH, CH, X, and Z take ES to make the plural. Glasses is right. Brushes, okay. Watches, nothing wrong. Lampet, uh oh. Lamp doesn't end in S, SH, CH, X, or Z. Ah, it should have an S only. Is this our Sonia? She looks like the same one to me, ma'am, but I think her uh, head's just a little bigger. Oh. <laughs> Here's another list. Hmm. Words that end in F or V sound. Loaves, 
cotton pot. Elves. Wait. Elves has a V sound. It should be spelled with a V-E-S ending. <laughs> Some reward. You know, she doesn't always show it, but I think Mrs. Johnson was really proud of me today. And she could help me get a job paying more money. Maybe with a title. Vice President Sonia Pavlovich, huh? Ooh. <laughs> well, maybe next year. Oh, it does sound nice, though. Ah, as Shakespeare said, be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness. Mm. Ah, not without effort and practice. Look at these words. Which is incorrect? Did Shakespeare ever say anything about a heartless slave driver? All right. If a word ends in O following a vowel, add S to make it plural. If the O follows a consonant, usually add ES. Mm -hmm. In heroes, the O follows a consonant. Huh, it's spelled right. It takes ES. The O follows a vowel in cameo. It needs only S. That's right. The last O in igloo follows a vowel, so it should be spelled with just an S. Huh. Now, if anyone should ever return more than one igloo to customer service, I will know how to handle it. Young woman, are you paid to sit there and do nothing? I'll be glad to help. Then you can take down this complaint. This is thoroughly useless. Thoroughly? This Acme Builder Shelf unit was supposed to be easily constructed. E easily constru easily constructed. But the directions are meaningless. Wait. Absolutely meaningless. Absolutely meaningless. I mean, it kept yes. wobbling, and my books kept falling, and then it completely collapsed. Oh, completely, completely. Lee, collapse. This is foolishness. Foolish. I won't be coming back in here anymore. You won't get any more of my money. I want my money back immediately. Oh, I immediately. Im immediate. Such it stubbornness. What was that all about? Uh, I was trying to take down that customer's complaint. What was the problem this time? Well, for one thing, he kept using these words that ended in L-Y, L-E-S-S, -S, and N-E-S-S. -S. Uh, let's see what you have here. Oh, I see what you mean about your suffixes. My what? Word ending. Let's forget about this for a while and take a look at this. Suffixes like L-Y. L-E-S-S -S and N-E-S-S -S all begin with a consonant, right? Uh-huh. They usually don't change the spelling of the root word. Uh, what's a root? It's the word the suffix is added to. In this example, the root word is complete. Well, do you leave the final E when you add the ending L-Y? Right, when the suffix begins with a consonant. Oh, then immediate... It's the same. And it needs to keep the final E and add L-Y. You don't change the original spelling of stubborn. So stubbornness should have two N's, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. That doesn't look right. Is it that Y changes to I business again? You're catching on. Huh? Easily done. How about wobbly? Hmm. Wobbly doesn't sound right. If the E is silent and you add a suffix that begins with a vowel like ing, you drop the silent E. Oh, that will work for use also. 
I drop the E when adding ING. Right. But what if you are making you fall instead of using? Hmm. Well, I guess I should keep the E since the fall begins with a consonant. Too many L's. It isn't like the word fool when you use it as a suffix. Okay, okay, what? Huh. This Acme Build the Shelf Kit is thoroughly useless. It was supposed to be easily constructed, but the directions are absolutely meaningless. It kept wobbling, and my books kept falling. Then it completely collapsed. I want my money back immediately. Such stubbornness. Good. Now the rule that applies to doubling the final letter when adding ending. What? Generally, you double the final consonant if the word has only one syllable. And the final consonant is preceded by a vowel, like these words. Win, winner, plan, planning. Oh, let's see. We were planning to sell many kits. What if it's a longer word, more than one syllable? If the root word has more than one syllable, you double the final consonant if the last syllable is stressed. You know, accented. What? Are you talking about my accent? No, Sonia. I mean if you pronounce a word with the stress on the last syllable. Oh. Listen to these words. Per. Mit. Be. Gen. Oh, so you would double the last consonant to add a suffix. Right. So... Begin would be B-E-G-I-N-N-I-N-G. We are beginning to receive complaints. Yes. What about the word offer? Hmm. Offer. No, the first syllable is stressed. Give, offer. So, offering or offered would have only one R. We are offering the customers a refund. And when in doubt, look, look it up in the, the dictionary. dictionary. Arthur, mm. Mrs. Johnson and I talked about how you put a suffix onto a word without screwing up the spelling. You're learning that grammar is an ongoing process of building parts of speech into effectively written expression. Words themselves are built from root, suffixes, and prefixes. Wait, what was that prefixes? Well, prefixes are added to the beginning of a word, and the spelling of the root word usually remains the same. Oh, you reminded me. I need to put prefixes in my book. Come on over here with me for a second, Sonia. Okay. Now, when a prefix is added to the beginning of a word, the spelling usually doesn't change. For instance, Look at these words, Sonia. Able, unable, legal, illegal, guided, misguided, affirm, reaffirm, regular, irregular. Well, that's easier than some rules are to remember. Oh, all these rules and exceptions. I'm finding I have to do a lot of memorizing, looking at words and writing them over and over, using them in sentences. That's wonderful. That's exactly what you should be doing. Then practice. Practice makes perfect. Did Shakespeare say that? No, but it's good advice. Let's try it. Hmm. Practically is right. Ah, intentionally is wrong. Intentional ends in L, but you still have to add the whole L-Y suffix. Huh. Loneliness and handily are spelled correct. Let's look at one more group. Hmm. 
drop the final E if the suffix begins with a vowel. So, desirable is right. If the suffix begins with a consonant, like L-E-S-S -S or M-E-N-T, you don't drop the final E in the root word. Ha, ah, hopeless and statement are right. Uh, there are exceptions to this. For instance, if the final E follows a C or G that have a soft sound like S or J, you do not drop the final E. Words like noticeable and outrageous, you'll just have to memorize and practice spelling these words. How will I ever remember all this? Oh. Well, as I'm trying to explain in my book, that's where the dictionary comes in. Look up a word when you're writing at home or at work. See how the word is divided, how it's accented, and any unusual combinations of letters. Once you get used to what to look for in words, the spelling becomes much easier. Oh, watch out for words with double letters, like um, professor, occasion, vacuum, accommodate. There is a list of commonly misspelled words in your workbook. Remember the see, say, write method and practice them. For instance, accommodate, accommodate. A-C-C-O-M-M-O-D-A-T-E. Accommodate and get acquainted with that dictionary. It should be a good start for you and your writing. Local funding for GED on TV has been provided through a grant